This is PFCX opening the doors of the Mystery Playhouse once again, and for your pleasure tonight, we've selected a mystery play that has been recognized by many critics as a modern classic. It's Ladies in Retirement, written by Edward Percy and Reginald Denton. It is not a whodunit. You'll know the murderer. Your problem will be to guess whether or not the murderer will be caught, and if so, how. I think you'll find the guessing very fascinating. Listen now to Ladies in Retirement. of the Thames River below Gravesend is a place called Estuary House. There, seated before a piano, is an aging woman wearing a flaming, unabashed red wig. She is singing a song of her youth. In your little inside With a shake of his poor little head Here it lies Oh, Willow well, young man, just who are you? Albert Flame, Albert Feather. He brushed right past me, Miss Chris, right past me at the door. Oh, it's all right, Lucy. You run back to your kitchen now and get on with your work. Just as you wish, Miss Fitz. So, you're Ellen Creed's nephew, Albert. Right. The one who clocks in the bank at Play's End. Your obedient servant, Mum. <laughs> and uh, you, I take it, are Miss Fitz. Aunt Ellen wrote me that you were bringing her down here as your housekeeper. Uh, shall I have to wait long for Aunt Ellen? About a week. She's gone up to London. A week? Oh, Lord. That has done it. I'm done for, that's all. Just done for. Is something wrong, Albert? Well, I'm short in my petty cash account at the bank, and if I don't put it back by the time the cashier checks up tonight, it... Well, it's the junk for me. I, uh, don't suppose that you... What's the amount? Well, it... Twelve pounds. Cards? Racing? A girl? Oh, no, an actress. There, 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 there was a company in Gray's End last week. Oh, at the old Rand. I played there myself. Front row in the chorus. Oh, years ago, of course. Well, you shall have your twelve pounds, Albert. <laughs> like to see where I keep my petty cash? In the fireplace there? No, here in the old bake oven. Bake oven? Lummy. Why, you could roast a whole ox in there. Oh, it is big for what's in it. Now, let me see. Here's five. Mm -hmm. Another five. Five. And two ones. That's right. Twelve pounds. Oh, you are a peach, (laughs) Miss (laughs) Fisk. Well, Albert, there's no reason your Aunt Ellen need ever know you've even been here today. You can pay your first official call this day next week. Be a bit of a family reunion for you then. Aunt Ellen's in London. She's gone up to fetch your Aunt Louisa back to visit. Aunt Louisa? Oh, oh no. Uh, Oh, Ellen told me about Louisa. Uh, She says she's, well, uh, uh, rather pathetic. (laughs) Pathetic? Yes. Trust Aunt Ellen to give it the best name. Uh, Well, Miss Fisk, I I hope you've got strong nerves. You'll need them entertaining my my pathetic old Aunt Louisa. Louisa, dear, don't you think you could take your bird outside now? Oh, please don't be cross with me, Ellen. He, he's such a soft, quiet bird. Yes, dear. But I think you'd much better take him out into the garden and bury him. You know how Miss Fisk feels about your bringing things like that into the house. I hate her. Miss Fisk in her horrid red wig. We have her to thank for these four months here together. Ellen... Can't we send Miss Fisk away, and then we could be really alone? But I keep telling you, dear, this is her house. Oh, you, you, you won't send me back to London to the awful, ugly street? Ellen, promise. Promise me you'll never send me away. Oh, my darling, I do promise. I promise nothing shall ever make me send you away. Run along now, dear. Out into the garden. Quick, run. I'll fly. Oh, this is like a... Uh, Remember, Annie, you promised. Yes, my darling. Yes. I promised. Well, 
Helen. Leonora, please give me a little more time. Time? I invited your sister here for a few days, and she stayed on for four months. Well, couldn't she stay here permanently? Oh. I I'd pay for her board. You could take it out of my wages. So that's what you've been scheming for. I didn't scheme. I only hoped. Oh, Leonora, when my father was dying, he made Louisa over to me. She's a sacred trust. And I... Well, I, I, I've nowhere else to send this her. This won't I... do, Ellen. You haven't been fair with me from the start. You never told me Louisa was... Well, what she is. I told you she was rather pathetic. Pathetic. Eccentric. She's feeble-minded. I say your sister belongs in an institution. I will not have her here any longer. She's got to get out. Very well, Leonora. It's your house. And I'll take Louisa out of it by sundown. By sundown of this very day. <laughs> Driving in a carriage. Oh, Ellen, this is wonderful. But who oh, fixed Miss Fisk? supper, now that you've sent Lucy off on her holiday. Don't worry about Miss Fisk's supper, Louisa. Oh, uh, driver. Driver, stop right at the foot of this hill. Louisa, yes. I'm getting out now, and I'm going back to the house. Oh, but, but I'm yes. going to try to persuade Miss Fisk to sell us her house. Oh, oh, you are clever. Oh, Ellen. Now, yeah, quiet, Louisa. I want you to put your hand on your heart and swear an oath. Swear that as long as you live, you will never tell anyone about my trying to buy Miss Fisk's house. Helen, you're, you're, you're frightening me. What did I say? Now, this instant. Uh, uh, all right, Helen. I, I swear on my heart. There. There, that's my good darling. Oh. Oh. Give me a scarf, please. My scarf? But, Helen... You won't need it in the carriage, Louisa. And I might need it. Where I'm going. Thank you, darling. You can go now, driver. Very good, ma'am. came to see us. Better late than ever, Auntie. How are you, old girl? Just to think, Ellen, I, I didn't know him when I opened the door. If the vicar hadn't been here, I'd have been afraid to let him in. The vicar was here? For a few minutes. He asked when Miss Fisk would be back. Oh? I, I said I didn't know how long she'd stay abroad. <laughs> how surprised he'd be if he knew she isn't coming back to this house at all. Louisa, of course she's coming back here. I'm afraid you've overexcited her, Albert. Now, Louisa, darling, 
Run along upstairs and take your nap. Oh, but I want it to have tea with Albert. You shall have supper with him. Uh, now, before you ask me to supper, Aunt Ellen, don't you think you'd best know why I've come? Well, what do you mean, Albert? Well, uh, I've no time to beat about the bush. The police are after me, or will be, as soon as the bank gives them my description. The bank? Oh, but you haven't stolen money from the bank. Oh, it's it's my first mistake, Auntie. Now, if you'll just hide me until it's safe to leave, I want to make a fresh start. America, Australia, anywhere. But they'll... They might search this house. Oh, no, they won't. Now, I didn't meet a soul on the way over from Gravesend, except your vicar, and he'll forget me in five minutes. I know these absent-minded old duffers. Oh, don't look at me as if I were a murderer, Auntie. I may be light-fingered, but I haven't got blood on my hands. No. No, you haven't. I'll hide you, Albert. I've no right to turn you away. <laughs> well, Auntie Louisa, will you cheat me again at cribbage, or shall I tickle the ivories a bit for you, eh? <laughs> oh, Albert, you are so funny. Well, I'm glad you appreciate me, me old stalker celery. Ah, here's a tune just your vintage. Remember? Oh, Albert, stop it. Don't play that tune. Well, why ever not? Don't you like it? Ellen doesn't. She made me stop humming it. I expect she got tired of hearing Miss Fisk singing it. Oh, I'm so glad Miss Fisk's not coming back to this house. Oh, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Yes, you said it once before and Aunt Ellen shut you up. Well, I, I swore for Ellen I'd never tell anyone. She's bought this house from Miss Fisk. Auntie bought this house from Miss Fisk? Oh, go on. She couldn't have. She lost all her money. Did she? Oh, yes, but she's got most of it back now. Has she now? Auntie always was a shrewd old canary. I, uh, wonder if she keeps much cash about the house. <laughs> oven doors open. So you're the burglar. Here now. There's nothing behind that door, me girl. Miss Fisk kept all her money there. It's the old bake oven. Bake oven, my foot. Here, have a look. Oh, it's all bricked up. Yes. It must have been done while I was on my holiday. But whatever for? Why should anybody want to brick up the bake oven? Now, I don't know, Lucy, my love. But I'm sure I'm going to find out before I'm through around here. There, I finished my letter, Louisa. Come along now, dear. We're late for church. Bye. Bye bye, Albert. Goodbye, Aunt. Have a good pray. Lucy. Lucy, bring in the kitchen mirror. Quick, my pet, look sharp, will you? Oh, come in. Here. What do you want with a mirror? A loving look at your face? Now, a look at this desk blotter. Huh? Aunt Ellen's been writing a letter, and I've an idea it was an answer to the one that came special messenger from Miss Fisk this morning. Oh, well, you must be off your head. Oh, quiet. Just as I thought. What? Now, listen to this. In reply to your query can't make out the next few words. The signature on the check made out to Ellen Creed is mine. Owing to a sprained wrist, there may have been discrepancies in my signatures on recent checks. Yours very truly, Leonora Fisk. Leonora Fisk? That's right. You're not signed Leonora Fisk. Why, she's fooling the bank and taking Miss Fisk's money. Yeah, recognize this, Lucy? Found it tucked out of sight in the cupboard upstairs. What's Miss Fisk's wig? Her best red wig. That's right. Now, Lucy, I've oh. got a scheme to get to the bottom of all this. But, uh, 
I'll need your help carrying it out. Well, what is it you want me to do? Easy as pie and simple as Simon. Tonight, when Aunt Ellen's in bed, you ought to put on this red wig and sit down at the piano and play us a tune. What? Uh, sort of a, a, a tableau, you might say. And someday, Lucy, you may be playing for me in a house that's our own little home, eh? Well, <laughs> you tempt the holy saint, Albert. <laughs> I'm told you were very good to me, Albert, after I fainted last night. It's a dangerous habit of yours, sleepwalking. I wasn't asleep. Thought I heard something. And I came down to investigate. <coughs> Albert! Oh, now, steady, Auntie. Here and ghosts again. It was only me knocking out my pipe on the bake oven door. Did you think someone inside was knocking to get out? What's behind that remark, Albert? Oh, you know very well. By the way, here's something you may want. Sort of a, a souvenir. Leonora's wig. Then it was you last night. That's right. Me and Lucy. Look. She was at the piano wearing the wig. And, well, the game's up, Auntie. Lucy knows too? Oh, she suspects something's up. She's got no real idea. Trust little Albert for that. Oh. You know, Auntie, I've changed my mind about leaving England... Matter of fact, I'll need a little money for a wedding present. I might decide to marry, Lucy. So you've come to the conclusion that it's safer to be a blackmailer than a thief. That's right. But surely you wouldn't want to stay on here with me. Oh, why not? You'd never be quite sure, would you? You've got a hearty appetite, Albert. Do you think you'll enjoy your meals now? Yeah, you'd never do it a second time. You're bluffing. Am I? It takes quite a bit of courage to kill the first time. But once you've sold your soul to the devil, it comes easy. I think you know I did it to provide my poor sister with a home and happiness. She's all I have and she was left in my care. And don't think I'm going to hand over what I've taken for her to a treacherous little sneak. What's that? Oh. Oh, good morning, Vicar. Reed, I, I thought perhaps you should know. My wife's just had a call from the Gravesend police. Police? Gravesend, you say? Yes, they're looking for a young man who's stolen some money from a bank. The description was very like your nephew, Miss Creed. I've got to move fast, Auntie. Got any cash handy? Yes, in my purse. Here, Auntie. Ah, uh, well, thanks a lot, Auntie. Uh, my wife didn't know your nephew was here, Miss Creed, so naturally she said nothing about him to the police. They've gone to ask at Decoy Farm. Decoy Farm? That's quite close. Well, you win, old girl, don't you? No hard feelings, though. I'm a game loser, I am. I'll see you in church, eh? I, I'm sorry it was your nephew, Miss Creed. I'm afraid he won't get far. Goodbye. Goodbye, Vicar. And thank you. Very well, Lucy. You can come down off that stair landing now. Lucy, do you hear me? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Miss. I, I was just... A... Eavesdropping can be a very dangerous thing. Well, how much do you know? No, only about Mr. Albert. Nothing about you, nothing at all. Oh, no. They were 
you are. Don't come any closer. Why should you be afraid of me, Lucy? Sit down. No. Let's talk for a bit. No, you, you're trying to trick me. Like you tricked Miss Fisk and murdered her and, and bricked her up in the bank over there. No, stay back. Stay back, I tell you. Now, Lucy just passed me, running like the wind towards that farmhouse. The one with the funny name, you know. Yes, I know. Decoy Farm. Some gentlemen from Gravesend are there. Lucy wants to talk to them. Gravesend? Uh, are they friends of Albert? No. Not friends, Louisa. Tell me, my darling... Have you been happy while you've been here? Oh, yes. So happy. Oh, it's been so, so lovely and peaceful happy. here all by ourselves. Oh, I, I hope Lucy won't bring those gentlemen back here. She won't. I promise. Now, my dearest, I have to tell you goodbye. I have to go now. Over to meet those gentlemen. Myself. Creeps, you've been listening to Ladies in Retirement, written by Edward Percy and Reginald Denham, and adapted for radio by Elizabeth and Jane Park. The original music was composed and conducted by Alexander Semler. Miss Leslie Wood was featured in tonight's play. Until next time, then, this is PFCX, closing the door to the Ministry of Claims. This is the Armed Forces Radio Service.